outfit. On the Daily Rundown, we look at some of the big stories of the day and even some littler ones you may have missed as well. Now, today we're talking Greenpeace, drones and the next generation of NHS contracts. Later on, we'll also have music for a good cause from Lashes. But to start, I'll introduce the pair we'll be discussing all of this with tonight, our guests. First of all is a former actress in Coronation Street and Alan Bleasdale's GBH, which is amazing. Uh, and now writer and non-practicing barrister, Isa Toure. Hello. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. GBH is amazing. And I've told everybody in the office to watch it because it's on uh, all four. It is, it's brilliant. Very good. And also joining us is poet, stand-up and pop culture party warrior, Maddie Howard. Hello. I will ask about the pop culture party warrior thing later. Good. I'm intrigued. <laughs> now, it's not all about us on The Daily Rundown. You, yes you, can join in too by tweeting us at The Daily Rundown. We'd love to hear from you and you can say hello as well to producer Emmy. She's there on Twitter right now doing nothing else. Right, time for our first news story. Billions of pounds worth of gross domestic product could be lost if the UK voted for Brexit. That's according to a Treasury report today. It says the nation's GDP could be 6% lower by the year 2030, costing every single household over four grand and hitting the funding for the NHS, schools and the army. In the Times newspaper, Chancellor George Osborne has warned of enormous costs for the public finances. Of course, though, the government have already stated their official line of wanting to stay in the EU. Leave campaigners were quick to dismiss the report with UKIP MP Douglas Carswell tweeting, government reports written by government officials supports government line. Shock. So is this report actually hard evidence against Brexit or has Mystic Meg had a hand in it? What will the imme immediate future bring come June the 23rd? Isa, what do you think about this? Oh, I have no idea. I have to say, I, I find it hard to believe that, you know, we can just predict this now. Ultimately, I just think, you know, if we left the EU, that would be when we started finding out what repercussions there were, what, what effect it would have. But to be able to kind of, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's the thing, it's that thing of statistics. I remember doing psychology years ago when I was doing A-level and, um, uh, um, and there were there were studies that we were able to just create statistics to make to prove our study, mm. you know. And I, I mean, I'm not saying that that's what's happening here, but I just think to myself, well, you know, if they don't want us to go into the EU, what what's the best thing to do? You know, find, create some figures and really complicated, um, you know, statistics and formula, formulas and frighten everybody. I just don't think that you know there's any way of us being able to predict what the outcome would be now when we've been in the EU so for such an mm. incredibly long time. Have you had your pamphlet through the letterbox yet? That looks a little bit like Cards Against Humanity. No, I haven't. I haven't. No, I'm waiting yet. for that to come. I haven't seen one. Maddie, I've had have it. you? Have you had it? I it have... does look like Crimes Against Humanity. Well, it's the same typeface. Well, I had the one for leaving the EU ah. rather than staying in. So, and and I'm in favour of staying in. Mm. So I had the one for leaving, which I was disappointed about. I didn't want that one. <laughs> so, what do you think about the statistics today? Because during the Scottish referendum. The SNP and people who wanted independence from Britain said that they would be able to survive on uh, North Sea oil. Mm. Now we know prices have gone from $140 a barrel to sub 30 and there wouldn't be any money. So how can we trust statistics about future revenue? No, I mean, I, I very rarely trust statistics and statistics can be manipulated. Mm. Uh, most people don't understand how they've come about these statistics. Like you say, they're quite often, you know, formulas and models that unless you're an economist, you don't understand. And even if you do, you just think, well, okay, I'm probably quite skeptical about them. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I just think that the, the proof would be only in, you know, the reality of, of leaving. I'd be very, 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 surprised though if you know come the referendum people actually voted to, to leave 
because people do not like change. I mean, it just seems to be a natural kind of human instinct not to like change. And for most people in this country, they have only ever known being part mm. of the EU. They've got the free movement of workers. You know, they've, they've got all the benefits. They don't know. We, we, we keep being told, OK, you know, we'll lose this and we'll lose that. But we know of the benefits. We don't know of what it is like to go it alone. Mm. You know, and I, I, I'd be very surprised, just as, like you say, um, um, the Scots didn't um, vote to leave um, the UK in the end. Very slim, though. It was slim, slim, but they, but they didn't. They didn't, did they? Um, I'd be surprised if people said, yeah, yeah, let's just leave. I think people like the idea of independence. They don't like it, they don't like it when, you know, um, um, uh, Brussels dictates, oh, well, your banana's got to be, you know, straight and not this shape and blah, 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 and various different mm. things. It does seem like an imposition of, of rules from, from afar. Um, however, it's not that far away, though. Brussels it's not is, that. It's, 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 well, it's across the water. It's not here, is it? Do you know what I mean? And I think that, that it's, it's people don't like being told to do some. It's like you don't like families don't like to being told, you know, um, something by another family. It's like yeah. okay, we can we can all attack each other. We can say, you know, this is wrong or that's wrong. But nobody from the outside should do it. Nobody should tell us how to how to live. And I think it's that that we don't like. However, I think that you know that and actually leaving the EU and all the benefits it it brings is um, is something else. So. Maddie, you've already played your cards and say you want to remain within the EU. Yeah, I did put that out there. <laughs> you, are, you have said that now. Um, could you be swayed, though, by maybe some statistics from the Leave side? If, if they came up with a report tomorrow to say, you know what, it'll actually save us £4,000 a year. Mm. You, you, you don't know what's going to happen. I think it's unfortunate because, you know, it, bias is going to come across from either side. So what they've said, even if it even if it was true, which because it's a prediction so far in advance, so what was it, 2030, that's mm. 15 years away, ridiculous that we could predict that far in advance. So even if uh, the Leave campaign did put out statistics, you would just think that it was propaganda from them mm. or a reaction. Um, however, there is a lot of risk with leaving and um, I do think that George Osborne had a point. I've never said that ever. Um, but I do think he had a point uh, when he said that it's, a, it's a, a risk and a gamble. And I think he was basing it on how it might be difficult to get trade agreements because we've left the EU. You know, there's, there's going to be hostility there and they're not going to give us a better deal than the one they've got. So that element, I think, is quite credible. And then the rest of it, you know, the way that they phrased it even, you know, they were talking about the cost to families because obviously mm. the Tories are a party that care about families, family values, all of it, the jargon around it, but it is intended to confuse. I think some of the Treasury's own statistics show that, you know, certain individuals might actually make money out of us being out of the EU. This whole prediction game, is it helping or hindering people's decisions to vote in or out? I don't know. I don't think it's helping, to be honest, because I don't think, um, you know, I don't think the, the average person on the street really understands these statistics. I don't understand the, stati um, the statistics given in terms of the formulas they've put out. They just say, OK, it will it will cost us this. You know, the average family will, family will be th um, this worse off. But how do we know? We're, we're not there analysing their data. We're just having to take their word for it. Then somebody else will come up with another statistic. We'll say, you know, something else. I would. I think that they need to 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 to, to, to speak in a concrete form, you know, and, and show something that, you know, some, that, that the average person can understand as opposed to, I mean, they think they'll, they'll say, OK, everybody understands money and they'll understand what it means to be worse off, worse off. But there's no point just, as you say, just giving us, you know, a ballpark figure and say, you just go, well, how do you come to that figure? What is the evidence? Mm. You know, you need to give us something that people that can work with and truly understand. As you say, you know, if you said, if you 
you, if you put forward the idea that, OK, well, people will just stop trading with us. I mean, that's at least something that people can understand. But do you They're, think people go, are just going to stop trading with us? We're, I think, the third biggest no, trading no, partner no, with the world. No, 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 that's not what I mean. That the, but what I'm saying is, if you give an example such as that, something mm. that, that people can understand, you know, like a, a, basic, a basic example, it will be a lot harder to trade. Mm. Our, you know, our prices will go up. Big, uh, we won't... We won't um, the, the competition will be so much harder for us. We won't have the benefit of that single market because, because, because. I think people will understand that a lot better than we, we, you, they'll just be £4,000, you know, kind of worse off. Um, I mean, I was reading something to do with the, um, with the GDP and that saying that the, this, the, what they're actually talking about is not, is not no, the, the, the actual GDP income. GDP because yeah, we've already and had it's not, the actual, it's not the actual income of families no. that they're talking about. And that in itself is confusing. It's a bit weird in to say, uh, you know, £4,000 worse off for every household, but what is a household? What does that mean? It actually means cuts to the NHS, not to that particular household. It's not as if that money will disappear. So with this continuing until June the 23rd, are you letting the decision that you've made, you've already made it, I'm, I'm not going to ask which way you're going to vote, <laughs> but are you letting your, is it a decision of the head or a decision of the heart? It should always be the head. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's the future of the country. You've Absolutely. got more than yourself to think about. I mean, something like this can't be just an instinctive thing. You can't just go, oh, I don't know, I feel like it today. Or <laughs> like, just really, you know, how can you do that? Like you said, it's the future of everybody at stake. And it's not if... often we get to do referendums, though. So to have such a stark mm. yes or no choice. Mm is slightly bewildering to, to the electorate. You know, when we vote for political parties and candidates, we've got names down there, what they stand for. This, yes or no, mm. this crosses the political divide. Uh, Tories and Labour and Liberal Democrats are working together and other factions are working against. But that's why I think people need more information. They really have to understand what it is that's going on and what the con real consequences will be. We can't just be throwing out statistics at people and just saying, OK, you know, it will, we will be worse off because, because, because. Look at these statistics. Or, no, we won't because of this. Because well, then you, it is people just then, you know, kind of like going heads to tails, you know, we stay in we, um, tails, you know, heads we don't, you know. Well, on that, brace yourself because we'll probably get loads more statistics throughout the early part of June, all of May and the rest of April. It's a lot to look forward to. <laughs> OK, it's time for a quick break now. But Isa and Maddie will return in a few minutes' time talking about the NHS, Mackie D's and drones. Get the kettle on. We'll be back in a bit. <laughs> 